all the time. Okay, all right. So what we're gonna talk about is how to start the conversation. Um, and you're gonna see some parallels between phone and also social. Um, and once you get used to a few of these ways, it, it is super, super easy. What I want you to keep in mind is the person with the most conversations wins. And it doesn't matter if it's phone or if it's, it's social media, we need to really, in, in this day and age, we need to get uh, really good at both. But you know, the phone is a lot easier because these are people that you already know, you've already kind of built some kind of um, know, like, and trust with them. So, you know, there are people on your phone, you have things in common with them. That's why they're in your phone. If you think about it, it's either because you maybe work together or you went to the same high school, you've got kids that played on the same soccer team, maybe you've got hobbies, uh, relatives. Um, you know, these are people that you already know, and it, and it makes it a whole lot easier for a number of reasons. The phone is easier because it speeds up the process. And I want you to keep that in mind. You can move this whole process along a lot faster on the phone than you can um, you know, on social media or talking to people that you don't know. And so I wanna challenge everyone and I'll bring this back at the end, but I wanna challenge you to you know, do one or two phone reach outs a day. I know in the beginning, it's kind of scary. People are like, you know, they're afraid to talk to people, especially people they haven't heard in years, but hopefully after we go through all of this, it will, you know, make it easier for you. The main thing about the phone is they hear your emotion. They hear if you're excited, they, they can hear sounds in the background, you can hear their emotion and you can hear sounds in the background. So maybe it's somebody you haven't talked to in years, but they're driving in a car and you can hear the rain or all of a sudden you hear kids or a dog in the background. These are things that you can bring into the conversation. Um, again, this just creates more rapport um, and emotion there. I'm gonna give you an example and you're probably gonna cringe at this, this example, but you know, when somebody says the word or the sentence, I should say, is that a pyramid? And so most people in a text, you have no idea if that's good or bad. You know, a pyramid could be good or bad, depending on what the person. But, you know, if they say it to you on the phone, I've had many people say, is this one of those pyramids? Because they love pyramids. They understand pyramids. And we are by no means a pyramid. But, you know, based on the way that a person says it, you already have an idea, if you can hear their voice, whether they like it or don't like it. So, and if they don't like it, then you can answer it in a whole different, different way, but you're aware of that. So these are some of the steps that we're going to use to start our phone conversation every time. This doesn't matter. And I'll go super slow with these scripts. And like I said, I'll put them up in our group. It doesn't matter if you haven't talked to them in 10, 15, 20, 25 years. It doesn't matter the last time that you talk to them. This script will apply to all of them. I mean, this wouldn't be a script I'd use for somebody that I just talked to yesterday. But, you know, if you hadn't talked to them in a couple months, you hadn't talked to them in a year, like I said, 20 years, 30 years, it, it really doesn't matter. But the first thing you want to do is you want to tell them why you're calling. And why do I say that? Because they're already curious. They're already wondering why all of a sudden, after 10, 20 years, you've decided to pick up the phone when you really haven't been in contact. W wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be curious as to why all of a sudden this person was calling all you know out of the blue. I, I remember still to this day when people approach us about an opportunity, it's usually because you know they they know we've been successful, but they haven't talked to us in years. And so they they pick up the phone and they talk to us, but it's like they're they're just playing catch up. And the whole time we're just waiting for them to, you know, unload this opportunity on this. So what I say is tell them why you're calling. And so I'll use a script very simple that says like hi name. I'm calling you to tell you about an amazing discovery that I just know you would want to know about. That's simple, that's all, not in detail, but now they know that I'm calling them about a purpose, about something. And then I usually will give them a compliment and I'll say, you know, you've been so kind to me or you've always been such a great business leader. I've always admired what you've done, some kind of compliment. You're great with people, you know lots of people. Some kind of compliment is what you want to actually give them as well. 
then you're going to catch up with them. So what you're going to do is simply, you know, say, Hey, how, how you been the last 10 years? You know, what are you up to? Do you still live in New York? Do you still work for so-and-so or how is the family? Are you still in touch with, maybe there's an old friend that you all went to school with. So you're just asking some, some, you know, simpler questions um, just to kind of catch up with them based on what you know. And again, it's perfectly fine if it's somebody from school that you haven't talked to in years and years, you just start off wherever you left off and ask a few questions. Now the trick here, and this is a big one, and I know this is harder for some of us, but we have to ask a question and allow them to talk. This is their time to talk. You need to let them go on and talk as much as, as they want. And you need to be a good listener at this point. I, you know, particularly when I'm on the phone, I like to take notes. I write things down, helps me remember things better, but I also have some notes in case I want to. But this is where we're going to ask a few personal questions, but we're going to let them go on and on and talk about whatever they want to talk about. It doesn't matter. This isn't um, a fact-finding mission to get a why out of them. You know, this isn't to make them say that they work too many hours or that there's not enough money at the end of the month or that they hate their job. This is just a catch-up point to find out what's going on in their life. It doesn't really matter what you talk about. But again, this should not go on for hours. This is, you know, a few personal questions, you doing most of the, the listening don't let it go on for hours. It would be weird to go on for hours. And, and I know some people will keep it going on asking question after question because they're afraid to ask them to take a look at what we're doing. So they're actually afraid of the next point. So, you know, set a timer, you know, 10 minutes would be certainly more than enough time to be able to catch up with somebody 15 minutes. If you find yourself on the phone 40, 50 minutes, that's not good. One of the things about our business is it, it's, touches of people and then letting the, the um, video or whatever you're sending them do the work. It's not about you. Don't make it about you. Make it about the video. So you don't want to be on the phone with them because it doesn't pay well too. If you think about it, if you spent, let's say you had two hours a day and you spent two hours or 50 minutes with just two people, or maybe you could spend 10, 15 minutes with eight people. And that would certainly up your odds as far as the amount of people getting involved in the business. It also does something from the uh, duplicatable part of this. Um, they can do what you just did to them. If, if they think that they have to be a salesperson or that they have to do a lot of talking or whatever, it doesn't work. They, they, they become fearful. They don't think they can do it. So we don't want this conversation to be able to go on terribly long. And so then, you know, I'll go on and this will be the, the balance of the conversation at this point. And I'll say, look, the reason I'm calling you. So again, I went right back to that point. The reason I'm calling you is because I have come across this amazing discovery that I just thought I had to share with you. So again, not, not a really, this is just a copy and paste really with your mouth. I mean, of course we're talking. So look, the reason I'm calling you is because I've come across this amazing discovery that I just thought I had to share with you. If I sent you, now does this sound familiar to our social media? If I sent you a short video, would you watch it? So you can see there's a lot of the same scripts that we're using again and again. And what happens with this is this becomes muscle memory, just like sports. This is muscle memory and you don't even have to think about it. This stuff just starts to come out of your mouth. And of course, at that point, they're, they're gonna say yes. I mean you know, what else are they going to say? You, you know, you've just caught up with them and stuff. But if they should press you on the content of the video, you can just say, and depending on who you are in your background, you might say, hey, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor or, or nurse or something. I could not do this justice. You just need to see this. This discovery is new and so few know about it. So now I've really teased them because I've said this is new and so few have heard about it. So again, you know, hey, I'm not a scientist. I'm just throwing this back and I'm putting the emphasis back on the video. I'm not putting it on me. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to know the ingredients of for tandem and what they do and all that other stuff that we have out there. Because again, if somebody thinks they have to know all about oxidative stress and NRF2 and all these different things, 
they're going to shy away because nobody likes to look dumb. So, you know, again, I'm just going to throw it back on them and say, Hey, you know me, you know, I, I, I could easily say, Hey, I was in construction. You know, I'm not a scientist, you know, I'm not a doctor. I could not do this justice. You just need to see this. This discovery is new and so few know about it. So then they'll say, sure. Okay, go ahead, send it over. So then you say, so if I send it, will you watch it again? This is where we're asking for confirmation. The more you get a person to say yes, and we're going to do this a few times, so it sounds redundant, but it's on purpose. If you get them to say yes a few times, they will feel terrible about not doing what they said to do. And so that's our goal. So, so if I send it, will you watch it? And they say yes. The next thing I ask for is, great, when can you watch it? So they'll come back and they'll say, Tuesday, I can watch it on Tuesday. So I'll say, great. Everything's great, by the way. Everything's great. Doesn't matter what their answer is. Doesn't matter if it's a month from today. Great. So if I call you the month and that day, or if I call you on, in this case, on Wednesday, will you have watched it? That's all I'm asking. Great. So if I call you on Wednesday, we have watched it, right? So they will say yes. And then I will go ahead and I'll send the video. So you see, I got a few yeses in there, but I'm also allowing my follow-up to kind of be pinned down. Now I didn't pin it down so much as to say, I'm going to call you at 10.01. I just said on Wednesday, I might get a little bit, bit more specific because typically most mornings I play tennis. So I might say, um, you know, if I call you Wednesday afternoon, would that be okay? But I don't set exact appointments up because sometimes we're on the phone with other people and then it puts pressure on us to be able to, to get off, to handle something else. Maybe we've got distributors calling. So I just usually make it general, you know, Wednesday or Wednesday afternoon or something like that. Um, and then they say yes and I send them the video. Now here's the follow-up. And I want you to think about this. Our video, it doesn't matter if it's the launch video we do or if it's ABC video, whatever video you like to be using at this point, when you do the follow-up, you just say, what did you like best? Or I say, what did you love best about the video? Maybe the guys wouldn't use love, but what did you like best about the video? And you know, a lot of times I might say, um, is it the scientific discovery or being first to market with this product? So see, I've given them two options here now. We can talk product or we can talk business. We can go either way. And at this point, we're gonna go down one of two paths. They can simply say the discovery. They wanna know all about the product or maybe they're a business person and being first to market means something to them. You know, people love to be first to know about something. So, you know, if it, I'll ask, what is it about the discovery? They said it was the discovery. I wanna know more. Just like if they say, um, you know, interesting. Well, what about it did you think was interesting? Or if they say, um, you know, reversing disease states or whatever, I'll say, what we want to drill this down a little bit. We want to get a little bit more information. Even if they say, what about first to market? I want to say, what about being first to market? How does that excite you? You know, I want to get a vision for what they think that is at that point um, and their ability or the ability to earn if they realize that that's exactly what that means. So at that point, as we've talked a little bit, and I do mean very little bit about what this means to them, you know, you could just say, if you could reverse aging, would you be interested in taking this product? Again, I'm trying to get some yeses here. I'm trying to move this conversation in the direction that I want it to. We didn't go off on all these different conversations. Or if you could earn money with this business, would you be interested? And then either one of those are going to give you a yes. If neither one of them is right for them, not interested in a product, not interested in a business opportunity, that's fine. That's great. At that point, I want to put them in the Facebook group. This is when I put them in Lifespan Matters to let that do the work for me. I let them get dripped on by Lifespan Matters. So, you know, again, that's been an order. I think sometimes people are just fighting to get people into that group. But I want to have had a conversation with somebody before I get them in the group. And it also means it's more likely that they're able and want to accept the invite that I gave them for that group. So getting back to our original conversation, depending on whether it's product or opportunity, I might say, what benefits would you like to see from reverse aging or whatever? What benefits would you like to see from, from our hair care? What benefits would you like to see um, from our skincare, whatever, whatever, you know, they've talked about, whatever they're there, it doesn't need to be reverse aging. You could put any kind of product or um, benefit or result in there. 
Or if we're going to talk opportunity, I might say, you know, how much would you like to, to earn and, and, and what kind of time? Do you have a time frame for that as well? So again, I'm going in two different directions, product or opportunity. They're not always the same. If it's product, great. I just love you. I just know you'll love this. I love how you how I feel on this product and I already see results. If I sent you a link to purchase, are you ready to purchase or do you have more questions for me? So you see, I've given them two options. This is important. People don't like to make decisions. So even if you're sharing like our product packages when they're ready to start the business, you want to start with the largest pack and, and really work that way up and then go to the lower pack. You don't even want to mention the 50. So that way, either one seems like a good package for them and they'll do what they can afford, but you have to put the largest one out there so that they know that it's available. And the reasons why, and there are a lot of reasons why, and we probably should do a training on that at one point. But if it's the opportunity, they get three choices. Great. Are you ready to get started? Do you just, just want to use the product or do you have more questions? If they say they have questions at any point, a great way to get somebody on a three-way call is simply to say, that is a really great question. Let me get Bob on the phone. He'll know the answer to that. We don't ask permission for a three-way call. We just go right into it, particularly if you're on the phone. It is an easy, easy thing for you to be able to do. Notice that this whole script parallels that of you know our conversations or our scripts that we use for social. It's very much the same. We need to lead and direct our people. They have no idea what our opportunity is about. Many people, and Bobby and I have started a few more recently that started and had never used the product because for them, it wasn't about the product. I think back to when we got started, you know, the gentleman that came in initially, if you don't know the story, um, to Bobby's picture frame factory to just get a picture framed. He was not offering Bobby an opportunity, but Bobby asked enough questions based on the way that this gentleman was dressed that Bobby invited himself to a meeting because for, um, Bo for Bobby, it was opportunity. Had this guy been a product salesperson and, and just given him product, Bobby probably wouldn't have been interested no matter how great the product is. So, you know, again, we have to be careful of the way that, that we present this and, and give people what, what they want. So again, notice that the script is, is pretty close to social. I would suggest you write it out and I'll put it in the group, the scripts. I would suggest you write it out and have it in front of you on your computer or stickies or whatever you need to do so that you can, can grab from it right away. But I want to caution you on one other thing that I've noticed. A lot of great stories. We've got that great group that Bobby's got in the chat now um, in Messenger on Facebook. And it's easy to pull posts and put them in stories and create stories now, which is, you know, which is great. But the thing that we want to be careful is when somebody puts up a poll or when we put up a poll and it says, yes, I want the product or 20% off as the promo that we're running now doesn't mean they're ready to buy. I hope you heard that. Just because they said, yes, they were interested in the product or yes, they want the 20% off or yes, I'm ready to buy doesn't mean they're ready to buy in stories. So I want you to be careful with that. You need to, again, ask some questions. Great. I saw you saw my hair care posts. I absolutely love this product. What interests you more or what do you like least about your hair? Get some information from them. Don't just send them a link. Have some conversation with them first to find out what it is they like or, or don't like or why they want the product or, or what is going on. So, so important. But let's get back to basics. I, and it was it was pretty cool. Bobby and I did the, the last um, LV um, Academy here in Orlando. And, you know, again, everything is let's do two a day. This business is not meant. Could you imagine if we all did two a day? We wouldn't be able to count the money. Let's do two a day. I don't care if it's one picking up the phone and one social media, um, two, you know, one follow up and one, you know, going out, um, whatever it is, um, you know, your customers, you know, this is a great time. I did a lot of this today was a lot of, um, you know, following up with my customers and stuff, um, just finding out how they're loving the product and exactly those words. Don't ask, you know, what do you think? You know, how are you loving the product? This is a great time to not only offer the special that we have going on, um, but maybe tell them about another product so that you can add to that shopping cart. 
or maybe it would be for a referral or, you know, whatever it might be, um, you know, or testimony. I like to get testimonies too. But, you know, these are some reasons why you want to be, um, you know, talking to your customers. It'll help you get some practice with um, talking to them as well, besides new people and stuff. But, you know, we did an interview that's in the training group, um, the consistency chain, which if you're newer, you might not know about it. I just shared it with somebody else recently. It's all about doing little things, two things, crossing them off per day and not about all, you know, sometimes we want to sit at the computer and do 10 or 12 different things. So, um, you know, I invite you to go take a look at that and maybe get the book. It's a quick audible. It's a really quick read. It's a, it's a tiny book, but very valuable and looks at why the 20 percenters in this industry do well. But you know what? Most of us are 80 percenters and how us 80 percenters can do equally well, if not better, based on this method.